everybody! How are you? It's so good to see everybody on Facebook and YouTube, across the country, everywhere. You ask me why I'm wearing this mask and this bow tie, it's because they match. That is why I'm wearing them. Um, and also, it was a long walk from my bedroom to the this box where I am sitting now to host this amazing Ritopia Lab Virtual Benefit 2020. I can hear you screaming. We're screaming. Woo! So happy you're all here. Um, Cheesy Chips, if you can hear me, we are starting the benefit right now. I love that you were so excited and wanted to do it, uh, wanted us to start. My name is Kevin R. Free, and uh, I am on the board of Ritopia Lab. I am an actor and director, and I have been working with Ritopia since 2010 when I directed a bunch of plays, and I always direct plays for Ritopia. And when they asked me to join the board, I said, yes, absolutely because I believe in Ritopia's mission. And uh, of course, we all know that 2020 is um, unique. I think a parent called it in one of our testimonials at the beginning. It's been a unique year. And when everything shut down, Ritopia Lab is one of the few organizations that I work with that pivoted immediately to offering classes to your students um, virtually so quickly. And it was really exciting to me. And then in June, they hosted their first annual Black Lives Matter. They have always mattered and they always will matter festival. And I had the great honor of directing those short plays by young black students of Ritopia. I, you'll see more of me later on and uh, the great staff of Ritopia Lab. And I want to thank you for spending this time with us. But we're going to start off with a video about the Black Lives Matter Festival. Roll it. The Girl in the Sea by Kalia Welt. Olivia Pearl is standing in front of the chalkboard reading her poem. I... <laughs> I want to go to the ocean. I love all the sea creatures. I feel like when I read books about the ocean, I feel like my heart admires on going someday. I love how the water flows, the waves, and I bet that it smells like salty air. I imagine my first step in the water feeling like nothing I've ever thought of before. Scene two, kids are coming out from school. Olivia sits down on a bench. Hey, Olivia, you know how you want to accomplish your dreams? Well, that won't happen because there's no water here. <laughs> well, someday I will accomplish my dreams because I'll live somewhere I can visit the sea. Uh, I doubt it. You don't even have a penny. <laughs> well, if you don't believe that I'm going to make it, I'm going to walk. About three months later, Olivia Pearl arrives to her destination. Scene three, at a beach in Florida. Olivia Pearl is walking on the sand. I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready. And I did it. But what should I do now? She starts walking towards the sea. She slips off her sandals and slowly steps into the water. Wait, what, what, what is happening? The water glows. Stingrays start making circles around her. At first, <laughs> she's startled, but then she gets used to them. Hi guys. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, for heaven's sake. You guys can't even talk to me. Oh, but we can. You are our missing piece that we've all been waiting for. You are the one. A wave stops above her and a bunch of sea animals 
and she looks around. Really? You are a part of the ocean. You are a part of us, too. Well, I really feel like it. I feel like you guys guided me here. And you made it. Olivia dives into the water and becomes a real part of the ocean. Ah, that was beautiful. Uh, That was one of my favorite moments from the festival that uh, Rytopia Lab produced this June uh, as part of the Black Lives Matter Festival. Um, And it was performed by Erin Marie Pettigrew, Skylar Van Amsen, and Anne-Marie Sykes. Um, and written by Kalia Welp, and it was called The Girl and the Sea. Wasn't it beautiful? I want to say something really quickly. I found out in our private chat backstage that Cheesy Chips is the OG. So Cheesy Chips, I bow to you. I respect you, Cheesy Chips. Send us another message, message, Cheesy. All right, now I want to introduce you to the person who... uh, is the person who is the second person to bring me to Rytopia Lab. She is the founder and executive director of Rytopia Lab, Rebecca Wallace Segal. Rebecca. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you so much for hosting this event. Um, It's, I'm so moved and grateful to be with everyone here tonight. Um, Thank you for logging in from all the different platforms and being with us. This has been an an astounding time, obviously, um, not just for us, but for most people in the entire world. Um, And, you know, um, we we have a story that um, has become the Rytopia story, just as we all have our own stories, and this is what it is. In March, we were actually all together, our entire full-time staff, we got together to plan an incredible year and to make our goal then to think about all the different kinds of impact that we wanted to have. And just exactly in the first morning of our retreat, we started to learn about how the city was shutting down and how in fact um, COVID-19 had been spreading throughout our city unbeknownst to us and um, Rytopia would change forever as our city was about to change forever as our country and as our world. So suddenly we transformed our retreat into a two day think tank where we reimagined our entire back end office. We had to build systems to figure out how to serve hundreds of kids online, uh, hundreds of workshops and then ultimately serving thousands of kids Um, six kids at a time, seven kids at a time. We had to figure out new approaches um, to to provide high high level engagement online. And we also had to figure out suddenly new programs that met kids where they were in this incredibly intense moment. We realized within weeks, kids were quarantined in their homes like we all were feeling disconnected. And at the same time, we were getting super connected step-by-step the lucky ones step by step through the internet. And before we knew it, we realized we can connect, we can create an international newspaper where while we're all alone in our rooms, we can actually, for the first time, write articles and think and workshop with kids around the world and actually compare what we're all experiencing. We can create an anthology of writing with kids' work and who are processing all the different ways that their cities and countries are are responding to the crisis and connect together as youth. We created a debate program for the first time because kids were on fire. They, suddenly the news was relevant to kids. You know, we all, all, kids always had to do some current events as part of their school activities, but suddenly kids became glued to the television waiting to find out if their camps would open, reading the newspaper to find out updates about school, reading the newspapers to learn about social justice movements that had very personal impacts in them in in a myriad of ways. Suddenly the whole world, the whole adult world became just as relevant to to the kids' world. And we developed a thriving debate program where we could really look at the issues of the day and unpack them together. We had high level discussions about 
all the social issues together in all of our different kinds of workshops. We launched narrative therapy workshops so that kids could process their loss and anxiety um, during, during the pandemic and during all of the changes. And of course, our mystery writing and our comedy workshops um, all suddenly became very appealing as kids, all of us needed pure escapism in response to what was going on around the world. So our staff, suddenly all of us were more engaged with all the issues of the day and all of the social emotional needs of our, of our youth more than ever. Within five days of our retreat, we were teaching hundreds of kids again online. Within a few months, we were engaging thousands, but there was a large group of kids that we had worked with that had slowly, dis that had quickly disappeared. We work with, thousand, with over a thousand kids in Title I schools every year. We, we work on creative writing, we do essay writing, we do college essay writing. We work with about 50 kids throughout the year at homes for the homeless shelters. We work with kids in treatment facilities, for kids who are in treatment who are, have been through foster care and have, who have had trouble with the law. We, uh, we work with hundreds and hundreds of kids who come to all of our sites um, on scholarship from low-income families. So many of our kids, their families weren't answering emails, our kids weren't logging on, and we had to figure out step-by-step step how to reconnect with our kids who had the fewest supports and who then, in fact, started to need us the most. So we stayed in touch with our schools and our families. And over time, throughout the spring, more and more of our schools managed to get online with us and our families slowly figured out how to get computers. We were able to lend out some of our computers and, slow, and our systems in our cities started to improve and our kids slowly and our families slowly started to get reconnected. But there are many more. There are, there are still hundreds, there are still thousands of kids, which we were hoping that, um, there are still thousands of kids that we still have not reconnected with. Um, and we are hoping that we're gonna reconnect with them through their schools this school year. And that's why we're reaching out to you today. You can help us reach those families that are most vulnerable and least supported during these times. Thank you for being here with us today in that spirit. And now from a few words, now for a few words from our kids. Hi, my name is Blake. I am 13 years old and I am in the ninth grade. I have been at Rytopia ever since I was in pre-K. Rytopia taught me how to express my feelings and emotions in writing and creativity. I'm so lucky to be a part of this wonderful community. They really take the time to get to know the heart and souls of a child. Rytopia has been such a constant for over half of my life and I've formed lifelong bonds. I can't imagine who I'd be now without it. Endless gratitude to Rytopia for always being there, no matter what else is happening in the world. For my daughter and for the entire Rytopia community, Rytopia has always inspired young writers to find and love their own voices. Hi, my name is Allegra Levine, and I'm so excited to talk about the ways that Rytopia has positively impacted my students at PS89 in the Bronx. Back in the spring when we went fully remote, I thought that our time with Rytopia was over, but they reached out to me right away and continued to conduct sessions with my students over Google Meet. They worked with them to write about current events and social justice, which really helped my students get through a difficult time. We're here together to really talk about how tremendous the Rytopia program has been for our school learning community. This year, unfortunately, through all the budget, uh, budget cuts and COVID situation, we had our budget cut by 20%. Uh, they left our kids without Rytopia uh, for the first time in the last five years. But we want to thank you and Rytopia for all for making sure that our kids uh, have the high level of emotional literacy through the Rytopia that we offers to provide our students and our school community support around the writing process. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bye -bye. I just want to let my Rytopia teachers know that I appreciate all the opportunities and gifts you've given me. 
when I hear the word Rytopia, it just makes my face light up. It's my son on a rainy day, and you guys are like my writing family. Whatever, wherever, or however they're doing it, you know, live, virtual, it doesn't matter. It is so worth it to do Rytopia. It would take me years to write all of the things I love about it. So just, you know, jump right in. It might be a little scary, but they're going to make you feel right at home. The late Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said, real change, enduring change happens one step at a time. And at Rytopia, I found that it occurs one word, one story, one child at a time. Rytopia has taught me an immeasurable number of lessons and some have been admittedly bitter pills to swallow. When especially influential instructor taught me that poetry does not in fact suck as ardently as I had believed and I've actually come to really love the form. Another that as much as I love commas, sprinkling them through my sentences, salt isn't always the best idea, but undoubtedly every instructor I've ever had the privilege of interacting with has taught me and every other child in their class that one essential lesson, our words matter because we are the future. When this shutdown first started, my summer looked bleak. Plans of going to a sleepaway camp were dashed, volunteer opportunities were giving rain chaps in this space, and my mood tanked. And then I got an email that changed the course of my summer, an invitation to a virtual writing camp with Rytopia. For four weeks, I experienced the heart of Rytopia, a space that was warm, embracing, and as much as I hate to say it, educational. And trust me, as one, I can assure you that that is not a word teenagers usually say with happiness. It was the kind of space that creates, with its focus on creativity, critical thinking, and empathy, our next Supreme Court justices, our next leaders, our future. So, as we mourn the loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, one of the most powerful women in America, someone who has shaped the course of our nation, and we wonder who will replace her, I am grateful for the change Rytopia is creating, the real change, the enduring change, one starry-eyed child at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Adrielle. Ah, that was amazing. I, Rytopia Lab reaches so many young people, and they are, they're all so different, so diverse, and Adrielle, uh, so beautiful. Thank you so much for that tribute. Um, next, oh, um, I want to thank uh, Yunju, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, for, for complimenting me on my jacket. I bought it on the internet uh, while we've all been stuck at home, and I feel really happy about it. And one day I will actually fit in it. Okay, now I want to introduce to you Mr. Matthew Jellison. He is over the moon about his work at Rytopia Lab. He began as a creative writing instructor in the summer of 2017, and he is now the senior curriculum manager. He's had the privilege of reading wonderful writing by extraordinary kids. Born and raised in NYC, Matthew writes, plays, and works with kids. His play cycle, The Giants, was produced by Loft 227. Matthew is the 2012-2013 Keenan Playwriting Fellow at the Kennedy Center, a two-time Playwriting Fellow at the O'Neill National Playwrights Conference, an alumnus of Fresh Ground Pepper Playground Playgroup and Space on Writer Farm, and a finalist for the Soho Rep Writer Director Lab. Prior to Rytopia, Matthew worked with kids and teens with the 52nd Street Project, Marquee Studios, the Kaufman Cultural Center, and Manhattan Theater Club's Education Department. This year, he edited Rytopia's latest anthology, a collection of work by kids and teens reflecting on this moment of pandemic and quarantine called We Can Still Connect. Here's Matthew Jellison. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. Um, hi, I'm Matthew. Uh, at the start of quarantine this past March, uh, I was on the phone with Rebecca wallace who you spoke, who you heard from earlier, our founder and executive director. And um, she had read a book, a, a, a group of personal essays and poems written by kids and teens in mainland China, uh, responding to their experience of quarantine and pandemic. 
Uh, as an organization, Rytopia had recently partnered with the DuPont Group in China, and some of our staff were even uh, had plans to head over to China to hold creative writing workshops there. Um, China, as we all know, was hit hard by the coronavirus a couple months before the worst came to the U.S., so those trips had been canceled. But the writers were still finding an outlet to reflect on their experience through writing. Um, Rebecca was blown away by the work she was reading. She wanted Rytopia to produce our own anthology of work from young writers all over the globe, reflecting on this moment of pandemic and quarantine. And she gave me the honor of editing that collection. Uh, working closely with my colleague, Ethan Shaffron Maltz, we opened submissions up and received a wealth of them, uh, nearly 400 pieces. Um, a group of Rytopia staff, alumni, and friends read and adjudicated all of those pieces. And just this summer, we were honored to release these two collections, We Can Still Connect. Uh, volume one is by writers who are um, 10 to 15 years old. Volume two is by writers uh, 16 to 19. Um, they are both available on Amazon right now, and uh, all proceeds do go to Rytopia scholarship programs. Um, the work is staggering. These young people confront this moment in time with bravery, honesty, conviction, truth, humor. Uh, I was a teenager living in New York City when 9-11 happened. It shaped me. Um, I wish at that time there had been a space for me to reflect in writing. I wish I had been able to contribute to some sort of record, a snapshot of what it was to grow up in the wake of a national trauma. During this global trauma, I hope this collection is a place for our youth to find meaning, hope, and catharsis. I also hope that you get a chance to give it a read. Um, next, we're gonna hear from a piece called Made in China from volume two of this collection. It's by a 16-year-old writer from China named Victoria Fang. Um, it's personal, rigorous, and thought-provoking. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy it, and here it is. The COVID-19 pandemic can be considered a magnifying glass and how it has exposed a multitude of structural shortcomings that cripple our global society, such as the efficacy of international governing institutions and the malaise of fake news. However, its unique relationship to China, with Wuhan being largely accepted the origin of the outbreak, has also brought to the surface the seemingly outdated but increasingly relevant issue of xenophobia. Not only has the virus triggered massive waves of blatant racism towards Chinese people, it has also allowed numerous international media outlets to shed their previous veils of pleasantries to openly denounce China's role on the global stage. An Australian news outlet even gleefully plastered the slogan, the coronavirus won't last long because it was made in China across its website. Why, I ask myself, has it been so easy for the general public to accept the narrative that the global pandemic was made in China, despite factual evidence that it was exacerbated by the ineffective responses of multiple countries? Let's explore the history of the term made in China. Hey, we're back. It's me again. Um, I think that I am now going to introduce Elsa Bermudez. Am I correct, overlords? Yes, I am. There you are. Listen, Hello. you just to sit there and smile while I read your bio. And and really, maybe you can pose as um, I get to some really good points in it. Because oh, I want everyone that. to know who you are. Um, <laughs> you have loved teaching creating, creative writing, essay writing, sketch comedy, and graphic noveling at Rytopia Lab since 2014. As a senior program manager, you also run Rytopia Lab's on-site scholarship program, Right to Recognition, and several off-site partnership programs. Elsa, you are a writer, comedian, artist, and educator. You earned your BA in philosophy, philosophy, okay, from Providence College, and your MFA in creative writing and fiction from the New School. You're incredible. Your short story agency was published in HOW Journal's issue 11. You studied improv and sketch comedy writing at UCB. I studied at UCB too. Not the writing part. You're better at that than I. Elsa has produced and performed on comedy stages around New York City, including the Magnet Theater, the Pit, and Upright Citizens Brigade Theater. You have also directed for Magnet Theater Sketch Program Remix, and uh, you write for Magnet Theater's house sketch team, House Party. And you produce a, a sketch comedy show called I Feel Funny. Look at you. Did you, you pose and watch you? Were you posing and stuff? 
I, I was, I was, I was posing and nodding. Yes. yes. Um, Good. Uh, Good. So you got it correct. Thank you so much. You're <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for being our moderator while you, while our students and some parents ask questions of Kevin James. This yeah. Kevin is going to go away. <laughs> Kevin James, the fabulous Kevin James from Queens. I'm actually in Queens right now, Kevin James. I don't know if you care, but I want to make sure that you know. Um, <laughs> so, Ethan, I guess you can take me out of here and bring in the great Kevin James. Hi. Hello. Hi, Kevin James and everyone else. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How, how, how are you? Uh, uh, doing well, considering the entire universe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how are how is everyone doing at this table? And Kevin James, we're we're doing okay. We're back on our show. We're uh, we're we're testing every day, and we're all we're all good. And we've been uh, working to w uh, well finishing up our uh, Netflix uh, uh, a TV show. So we have a TV show we're working on for Netflix called The Crew about NASCAR, and uh, we're we're finishing up uh, th those episodes now. That's amazing that sounds awesome i see like the postcards up there doing like some storyboarding and some yeah yeah, yeah. So we put them up there to look important but yeah yeah it's worth it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's our lunch um, for the past three weeks yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's this is awesome it seems like you guys are hard at work so that's that's super exciting um uh yeah we're we're so excited to have you um you know comedy writers are so important to the world and to us. And we have so many kids who are really into, um, you know, screenwriting and comedy writing and all that stuff. So um, we're gonna have some of our awesome young writers um, ask you some questions. Sure. Awesome. So right now we have Max. Um, yeah, Max, uh, take it away with your question. Hello. Hey, Max. Hey. Uh, so I've been writing stories and screenplays with Freytopia for about a few years now in this year. I am applying to film school and uh, I hope to one day enter the industry. And uh, my question for you is, how do you find the line between faith in what you can do and also room for improvement in terms of overcoming rejection? How do you motivate yourself after somebody tells you that they um, don't like your work? Well, that... Uh Boy, that, yeah. that endures forever. <laughs> that you know, uh, you, you got to be ready for rejection, no matter. That doesn't go away necessarily. Uh, yeah, I think when you stop listening to, you know, listen, look, you look for the note behind the note. When someone criticizes what you do, instead of taking it personally, you just have to sort of step back and see if if there's something smart there, and if there is, change it. And if you disagree, you're the writer, have the voice. But as Kevin says, re rejection never goes away. Even at our level, we're rejected all the time, but. You know, you need one yes. If you get twenty no's and one yes, that's that's you can't have more than one yes. So, so you know, just just you know, be, be true to yourself. Have your voice. See, don't take it personally if you get if you get rejection, and, and you should be fine. Yeah, and it you know it, it does get easier as you it, it, you go on, and like I've surrounded myself with people who uh, I feel have a similar you know uh, sensibilities in comedy and stuff like that. So. You know the ideas that we all kind of put in together we work as a team but when you're out there alone trying to make it and you're writing something and and presenting it and they knock it down you, you you can't take it personally and you know there is a fine line to you know adjusting and, and doing kind of taking their notes and being you know docile and just what they say and, and and taking counsel from people who've done it before uh before you but uh, there's also you know stick to what's important to you you know when you're writing and and you kind of find that way, you, you're your way. And uh, like I said, it's a, it's a di difficult process, but it's it's also very rewarding when, you know, you, you, you're you going to have these setbacks and people are not going to like it. And then you're going to find a breakthrough and someone says, you know, I love that, you know. And and if, if I could just throw something in, yeah. I find that like when you've written a script or a screenplay and your friends and people whose opinion you trust, they give you notes give yourself some time. Yeah. Like if, if the material is really fresh and you're too emotionally invested in it, I've written things. And I'm like, that's perfect. And friends are like, Oh, you could cut that. Yeah. You can cut that. I'm like, okay, they're crazy. And you look at it six weeks later and you're like, Ooh, yeah. I could cut that. I could cut that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's you, you see like a lot of the stuff you write when you first write it, you're very passionate about it. And you're like, I, this has to stay and this is it. But good writers, great writers will actually help you find, say you really don't need this. And, 
it'll feel painful in the beginning, but then sometimes you realize, you know what, they're right. It is, it's a lot more fluid without it. And you got to be willing to sacrifice that, you know, unless it's, you know, really important. You say, Hey, no, I, I really think this should, should stay. And, and then, you know, you live and die by the sport. Would you say there's like a gut reaction on like what you, like what you eventually kind of like learn to sacrifice and like what stuff you're like, really like willing to like fight to keep sure yeah yeah absolutely i mean you you'll, you'll know you know as you kind of navigate through the business and doing it and uh, it, it's it's really experience and, and and you can tell if people understand what your message is what you're trying to say and and in your comedy and your sensibility and if they don't get you i mean like i said surround yourself try to surround yourself with people that can kind of help you uh, with your sensibility, and, you know, and, and kind of encourage you in that direction. Um, but again, be willing to take notes and, and, you know, there is a format to, to, to writing certain things. Like a sitcom is different than writing for movies. And, you know, uh, it, 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 there's all different things that you, you might want to take notes on and listen to and say, Hey, it's got to kind of fit into this a little bit, but then there's stories about people who break the mold and it's like, wow, that was completely different and cool. Yeah. The, as a writer, the, the last time you have a chance, to sort of, you know, when you're a writer trying to break in, the script represents you. You don't have to take notes. I mean, it is the time where if 100 people tell you you're wrong, but you're sure, yeah. try it. You know, this is your time to to take your swing. It gets more complicated when you're when you break in, and then the people who are paying you have different opinions. But but you know, as a writer, you're you're putting out a product that represents you. So listen to everybody. Don't be defensive. Take it all in. At the end of the day, make sure you're happy with it before you send it out, because that's the only person you have to please at that point in your career. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for those amazing answers. I feel like that's really good advice um, that all of us really need to hear. Um, and thank you, Max, so much for that question. Um, yes, thank you. So um, the, uh, our next writer who's coming up is James. Um, so hi, James. Hello. Uh, yeah, so feel free to ask your question whenever okay. you're ready. You, you look like real life, where's Waldo? <laughs> what <do you> have? <laughs> Hi, I'm James. I've been writing screenplays at Rytopia for several years now. And my dream is to be in the WGA and write for television and movies. My question is, what's your writing process? Um, the, the process now or like when I was first starting? When you were first starting. Man, it was... It took a while for me. I, like I wasn't really a writer out of the gate, as far as that. I was a stand-up. I was a stand-up comedian, so I didn't know how to write, you know, a sitcom or or a screenplay for you know for a move to be a movie. Uh, I didn't know how to do any of that. So it really was me just through stand-up writing jokes for stand-up for me was the the, the gateway to to everything. Um, it really forced me to be because uh, you, you, when you do stand-up, you're everything. You're the writer, producer, performer. You know, you're doing all wearing all hats. So it, it really gave me a, a good background in kind of finding these ways. And you see how everything is a little different. You know, the sitcom is a little different than uh, than uh, doing stand up. And then the movie is different than a sitcom. And you kind of learn these things as you go. But if, if you're specifically if you know what you specifically want to write for, there's a format for that. And there are people that can kind of help you get into that and, and write for that. Right. I mean, I believe I, yeah. I never wrote. Yeah. I, I, here, you know, I think I think at the core, it comes down to the idea. I mean, you know, a log line is for a screenplay describing your movie in one to three sentences. Right. I think it has you have to be able to do that with whatever you're working on. And it has to be interesting because when you're asking someone to read something, they're going to say, what's it about? And that has to be good. I mean, you have to have a great idea. And then once you feel like, OK, I've got an idea that's original and people seem to be responding positively. I think you have to watch every movie in the genre you're working in. You have to, you know, I just think you really need to learn sort of the conventions, you know, of, of, of whatever genre you're you're working in and go forward. And then, and then I, th and I think we have some questions about it later, but then workshop it. Find other friends who are writers, swap screenplays, talk to each other, listen to it. You know, don't rush out your first draft. So that would be my order. Have a compelling idea at the heart. Make sure you have, know the language of whatever you're doing, and then and then share it with friends and and listen to their notes. Yeah, love to hear that. No, I think that's absolutely fantastic advice. I don't disagree with anything, and I'm not just saying that because you're my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh wow, he's in the witness protection program. <laughs> 
Hello. There you there. go. Hello, everyone. My name is Robbie, and uh, and I've been at Rectopia for uh, for three years, oh. and, uh, and right now I'm taking the comedy writing program. Nice. So I don't need the competition. Quit. That's yes. my advice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my question is: Do you let other pe do you let people read your work while you're writing? Uh, yeah. Do I let them read my work while I'm writing stuff? Absolutely. These are guys uh, that I, I bounce off. Uh, the ideas, and, and they'll tell me right away. Uh, I, I, I'll i take jokes from anybody, too. I mean, if it works, it works. And uh, I want to know because you want to test it before you go out there. And, and again, surround yourself with people you trust and you have a, the same type of comedic sensibility, with, you know, and that you can agree on things. And we still disagree on stuff, but for the most part, we know our wheelhouse and we know what we kind of want to do. And we help each other structure and restructure jokes all the time. So yes, I let everybody look at my work, and it's their work. You know, it's the same thing. It's uh, okay. Uh, one last question. Uh, what do you think makes people laugh? Because I usually like to make people laugh in my writing. Well, what I mean, I think my kids have heard me say this sentence so many times. It's the key to comedy is surprise. I mean, yeah. that's really what it is. You yeah. set up an expectation. You think you know where it's going. Be it a short joke or a whole movie. And then you, you know, then you go a different direction, and that's what makes people laugh. It's why a joke isn't funny the second time you hear it ever. You know, it's because you're not surprised by it. That's right. I mean, that's why we laugh at Jeff every time he walks in the room because we go, nobody's going to grow a beard that big, but he does. <laughs> <laughs> every, every day it's bigger. It's just we're like, he's, whoa, he's got to shave tonight. He nope, fooled us again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for supporting Red Token. And thanks for answering my questions. You got it. Yeah, of course. Do we Hello. Do we freeze? I don't think so. I think I think we're still going. Oh, All right. is this Lorraine? Oh, hello. Yes. <laughs> I think I popped up because I think Lorraine, you were frozen for a second, but I think everything oh. is cool now. Uh, Lorraine is one of uh, a longtime right to parent, and she uh, has a question for you guys. Um, so I think I'm going to be erased now. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mr. James and your team. Welcome. Nice. Nice I'm a mom you. of a ninth grader, the subject of my question, who has been at Rytopia for approximately seven years. Wow. So first, I want to thank you for being our honored guest at Rytopia's event tonight. Sure. And, uh, and I want to share with you that I enjoyed your work in Mall Cop. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I have two questions. Is it, is for it you. good? I haven't seen it yet. Is it yeah. good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, kids? it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> Especially when you realize you're in love and you have that little accident there, but uh, yes, yeah, it's awesome. That's right, where it hit the van. <laughs> that was surprising, um, which is why it was funny. That's right. Yeah, that was the surprise. You didn't see the, the car coming, or maybe you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing movie. So I have two questions for you. Um, how can I help a young person, my daughter, push through her shyness and take to the stage? That's number one. And secondly. Do you have any advice for shy people who are talented and deep down love to act, at least with her family? You know what? Let me say something. I, I, I may not appear now, but I was a very, very shy kid. I really was. And uh, I kind of fell into stand up uh, in, in college. Uh, it was in college uh, where I, I, I wasn't great in school. So I, I, I talked to somebody and my buddy told me to take a, uh, a public speaking class because it was an easy three credits to pick up. And uh, I joined up and I said, all right, he's, you don't have to do anything. It's easy. And I didn't realize the final exam in that class would be to pu speak publicly. I didn't even put that together. Right. You would have you to ask. You had right. no expectation. No, no, I thought it was right, going to be right, right there in the title. Yep, yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize that I thought we were going to be learning about public speaking, but never actually have to do it. And I had to do it. And it was, I was so frightened. I remember the night before trying to, we had to talk about it. it didn't matter, widget, whatever it was. And I put together a speech and uh, I, I was panicked. I was up all night, got no sleep. And I finally delivered it. And I got my first laughs at last doing that speech. And that was what it was for me. Uh, you know, I was very shy, still was shy doing stand up, even, the, even when I realized I wanted to do stand up then. It is like a drug. It's like it pulls you in and you want to perform more. The one thing I would say for your daughter is I know it's, it's, it, it is very difficult, but to try different things and to, to experience it because it's like anything else. The more and more comfortable you get with it, 
the, the better you're going to get at it. And and not worrying about that was another big thing for me. Was when uh, another comedian told me, "Don't worry about the audience so much of what, what you're you're giving to them and how, what they're thinking of you. Kind of just present yourself and just kind of just do your stuff like you're confident, like you know, fake it till you make it, and kind of give them the material and and let them feel like they're almost left out if they don't get, get along and, and laugh at what you're doing. And I kind of adopted that. And I, I was thinking, I was so nervous up there. But I feel like the audience is like a dog. They can sense fear, you know, so, so they know you don't them up. Just kind of be relaxed. You got to try to do it. You got to keep putting yourself out there. And the more she does it, the more she does it, she's going to get used to it, uh, hopefully, and, and grow. And, and, and keep trying to do you know, slightly uncomfortable things in, in that, you know, get on stage and do it. I think experience is the greatest feature, honestly. I mean, just doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. I was shy. I was shy. You were? I was shy. I was shy. And what did it for me in, in junior high school, I, I, I didn't have the confidence right. to go out for the school play, but I was in the chorus. I was yeah. in the choir. And just by being in the chorus and the choir and, and seeing someone that I knew doing it, it, it helped. That's a great idea. You know, it, and this is what I did as well, and I didn't even realize this. I joined an improv group. So, you, you know, you're not... We stand up your front and center, and it's just you. Uh, but I first started doing it. I was like in the background with an improv group where you can come up with things or not. And you can try something, and if it doesn't go well, you can jump off and get until you start getting your legs under you, and you can start feeling more and more comfortable with it. So I, I would recommend doing something if you win a group, you know, whether it's acting or, or, or comedy or whatever she wants to do. Try it in small little plays and little bits like that, and, and just grow that way. Okay, thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate yeah, it. Time ago, didn't you? I went a little long on that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm incredibly shy and never got over it, and it's why I'm a writer. Yeah. So there are the best. Oh, okay. I hide in the background. I'm like, I wonder what that would be like. That's yeah, why no. the beard. This is the beard. Again. I'm hiding, hiding from the world. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Kevin. Hey, hi, Kevin. Hi. And, and the crew of the crew. That's it's right. nice to see you. Thank you all so much for answering all of those questions and uh, for being awesome. I'm sure that the students will never forget it. And uh, because you ran long on that last answer, I now have to rush into the next thing. I, oh, I'm, not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Just it's all good. It's all good. Thanks, Phoebe. Thank you so much for letting us participate. I you know. Know. Thank you for doing it. You're the best. All Take right. care. All right. Thank you. See you guys. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, I want to introduce you to the person, the reason why I am uh, I first came to Ritopia. Um, his name is Dan Katroser. He's an award-winning playwright, screenwriter, and the first ever Ritopia Lab employee. As the founding artistic director of Ritopia Lab's Worldwide Plays Festival, Dan has produced over 500 plays written by young playwrights from all across the country. He's most known for writing the screenplay for We the Animals, which was nominated for five Independent Spirit Awards, Best Film at Outfest, and RuPaul herself selected it as the winner of the Sundance Next Innovator Award in 2018. Dan is currently the executive producer of a forthcoming TV show on HBO called More Happy Than Not, and lives and tries to breathe in Portland, Oregon with his husband Jordan and his dog Daisy. Hey, Dan. Hi, Kevin. I love thank the books behind you. Oh, thank you. They're all fake. It's just a facade. Uh, but, but Kevin, you are doing so fabulous as the MC. We're so lucky to have you. I'm lucky to be here. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I'm going to take it away. I just want to let everybody know that maybe partway through this very exciting auction, there will be a 97-year-old lady who will yell at me. Her name is Daisy, and she's right in the corner over there. But we're going to launch right in. Oh, here she goes. <laughs> uh, we're going to launch right in to this auction. Now, this auction is to raise money for Rytopia Lab. And remember that auction is just action with you. The very first, we're going to, I'm going to march through all four of these wonderful things that we're going to be bidding on. Um, package one is going to be a poet at home package. Package two is going to be cocktail making. 
experience package. Package three is going to be an REI outdoor adventure package. And then number four, it's going to be the Busy Bee Creative Kit for Kids. Remember, all of the money that we are raising here and now goes to Raytopia Lab, a nonprofit organization serving youth in New York City and across the country and even world. It is so important that we raise money for this organization. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to start off by telling you a little bit about package number one. Package number one is Poet at Home, The Writer's Journey. It's a half hour Zoom and reading with Poet Laureate of Virginia, Luisa Igloria. The Poet Laureate of Virginia, Virginia, the first state, or maybe Delaware was the first state. I just remember 1776 and, and yeah, my name is Richard Henry Lee, Virginia is my home. Don't worry, I won't sing 1776 to you. It's actually going to be the Poet Laureate of Virginia, Louisa E. Gloria. Now, inside of this package, you are going to get a Baron Fig Remote Work Bundle. <laughs> What is that? I'm going to tell you right now. It's a confidant notebook. It's squire pens. It's a squire pen stand, ink refills, a mastermind desk pad mini, a mastermind week pad, and nomad sticky notes. It's everything that you need to write your glorious poems, your profound poems, your hilarious poems, your uh, uh, demure poems, your sad poems, your happy poems, any kind of poem. Listen, I'm not writing the poem. You're writing the poem. Now, we're going to start this bidding at $200. You know, uh, the approximate value, though, we say is priceless. So the way this is going to work is please, 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 uh, if you could just uh, come right into the chat if you are interested in the package number one that will start at $200. Now, remember that uh, we are going to be having this online bidding going on for a whole month. But if we can raise this money right now, it's going to be absolutely incredible. So do I hear $200? Please throw it into the chat if you would like the Poet at Home package. Remember, you get your very own Virginia Poet Laureate. Who has that? I don't think anybody has that. But on top of the Poet Laureate, you're walking away with so many wonderful writing utensils that, I mean, ink, you get to have your own ink. Who are we? How are we this lucky? Well, I'm going to, I, I'm curious if we are getting, uh, if we are getting any people putting it into the chat, because I'm not quite sure if I can see it. But I think we are going to move on to package number two. All right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about package number two. Now, this will definitely be for, uh, you know, for our older, more mature writers or, or, or families of writers because this package number two is the cocktail experience package. Now, with this cocktail experience package, you are going to get a shaker set. You are going to get brandy. Is that Moesha? Oh, no, no, no. It's the alcoholic beverage brandy. You are going to get Robert Burns single malt. And on top of these fabulous cocktail ingredients, you are going to get a 15-minute seasonal cocktail demonstration via Zoom with mixologist Nick Griff. Ah, what a name to say, Nick Griff. And imagine, you could be home, forget the actual experience. You get to say, hey, honey, we're going to be on Zoom with Nick Griff in a little. And then when you're going to be there for 15 minutes, you're going to say, hi, Nick Griff, how are you? And then afterwards, you could say, hey, I just had a Zoom with Nick Griff. I mean, I'm saying it right now for free, but, you know, that's what I get to do because I'm the guy running this show. But you would get to do it and you would get to give money to Rytopia Lab. Now, remember that this bidding is starting now. And sure, we'd love to yank a couple of bucks out of your wallet today. But all of these options, oh, my God, Ricky Lula Siegel is going in for Nick Griff's cocktail experience package for the sound of $200. Do I hear two? Oh, this is all I ever wanted to do. Do I? Here, 220, 220, 220. Is someone want to give 220, 220, 220? Or does anyone have someone in the back? There's someone in the back. Anybody over there? Over, over here and here? Anyway, 220, anybody in the back? Is it you? Is it you? I'm, hey, is that you? Is that you? All right, sold. The cocktail experience package is sold to Ricky Lula. 
us to go. You get to have your very own 15 minutes with Nick Griff, bartender. Um, if you could just right here, right now, click the link at the bottom of your screen and follow the instructions to be able to give $200 to Ritopia Labs. I am so jealous of you, Ricky, but I know that you're going to have a great time with Nick Griff. All right, we are moving on to the REI Outdoor Adventure Package. There are a lot of words in here. It's a good thing that I learned to read. Okay, what comes with it? What comes with it is a hydro flask. Oh, hydro flask. These are the best kind of flask. It keeps it hot. It keeps it cold. Whatever temperature you want it to be. Are you, you know, are you me and you always want it to be 67 degrees inside of your coffee? Here you go. You got the Tent Shield double wall vacuum bottle. I mean, these hydro flasks, I mean, this is worth a thousand dollars right here. Then you get a Kamek field blanket, which is a waterproof rip stop outdoor blanket. I, you know, I have a blanket for the indoors, but this is an outdoor blanket. I mean, who knew? Next, you have America the Beautiful Path. Now, this is honored at sites managed by the Forest Service, the National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, Bureau of Land Management, Bureau of Reclamation, and Army Corps of Engineer. America the Beautiful Path will get you into all of these fabulous places. You know, when you're stuck inside of your apartment, if you live in a city, or, or you're stuck inside of your mansion if you're a billionaire, or you're stuck outside in one park where you want to see another. I mean, this is going to be amazing. You can go to any park in the country. You also will get a Swiss Army Camp Knife, which is great because it will have some tool that you have no idea how to use. It includes a large blade, a small blade, a can opener with small screwdriver, a bottle opener with large screwdriver and wire stripper, and an Osprey Daylight Plus Pack. Hiking backpack with large main compartment that is padded interior sleeve to hold a tablet or any other device. Also as a back pocket for hydration reservoir. I mean, you are ready to go if you have the REI Outdoor Adventure Package. The bidding will start at $200. Now this is worth I will tell you, this is worth actually $489. And if you can't picture that, fix your $1 489 times. But we're selling it for $200. All right. Uh, now, remember that this is for an absolutely incredible, uh, incredible, incredible organization. We are trying to raise money in these last few minutes. We need $100,000 for PS89, uh, for all of our programs that we want to do at PS89 and for public schools across New York. This, you know, what we have $200 from Candace Braun. Uh, by the end of the year, we want to raise $50,000 for the DOE. And by the end of the year, $100,000. Um, Candace Braun, uh, oh, Lorraine, you're the first bidder at $200. So Candace Braun, oh, Ricky Khan is at $225. Oh my God, it's going. We have $225, Candace or, or Lorraine, do you think you could bring us to $250? Anybody uh, want to bring us to $250? Can I hear $250? Bring us to $250. Come on, you know. Remember what's inside of this outdoor package? This is coming with uh, a hydro flask, a Kamek field blanket, an America the Beautiful Path, a Swiss Army Camp Knife, and an Osprey Daylight Plus Pack. This is for $250. All right. Oh, Candace Braun came in with $250. This is so exciting. I cannot believe this is actually happening. Thank you so much. But come on. Come on, Lorraine. Come on. Here. Ricky. Oh, Rick, you're coming in at $275. Wow. I, oh, my God. I'm sweating. This is so much tension. Ricky, you are you are at 275. Candace, Lorraine, can we bring it to 300? Come on, people! This is going to this is a Swiss Army knife. You, you, you can you, you can screw things and, and unscrew things. It would be incredible. $300. Is anyone there for $300? Going once. Go, oh, Lorraine has just chatted for 300 and Candace has chatted for $300. I don't know what to do with all of this excitement. I hope, I hope that somebody gets it. If someone, Lorraine, Rick, Candace, will you take us to 325? Will someone take us to 325? Lorraine, if you can do 300, you can do 325. Could some, Rick, I know you're out there. Rick, Rick, I, oh, Candace went up to 325. This is exciting. This is what the out, you know, if I were an outdoor person, I'm sure I could exhaust some of the sweat. Candace at 325. Lorraine, are you going to go to 350? Rick to 350? Oh my, I can feel you inside of your skin. You got to go to 350. Come on. This is, this is what it's about. This is the grit that we are talking about. You are going to climb the mountain of this auction for $350. 
Going once, going twice. Sold, sold to Candace Broad for $325. Candace, my goodness. Well, now you're going on an REI adventure. That was absolutely incredible. I can't believe I have more of these to do. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, Rick, for going in there. Candace, $325. Make that donation by clicking the link at the bottom of the page. Okay, well, now we are going on for our very, very last uh, incredible package. This is the Busy Bee Kit for Kids. Uh, inside of here, we are going to have a, uh, a box of children's books, uh, markers, a spirograph design set for drawing patterns, boggle, bookmarks, quiddler, the word game, set, the pattern game, code names, a journal, a charades for kids game, a creative coloring kit, a create your own book kit, you write and illustrate your own book, and then they send you a published hard copy of that book, Remicube, Telestrations, and Bananagrams. Oh my God, these are all of my most favorite games. Now I will let you know that package number four, the Busy Bee Creative Kit for Kids, the actual value is $400. But we are going to start our bidding at $200. So uh, if I want to just reiterate, for $200, uh, I think that uh, this game set is for your kids. Now, Lorraine asked a wonderful question. What is the age, uh, what is the age range um, of a child who would appreciate this particular kit? I will tell you that the game listed here rummy cube telestrations bananagrams quiddler set all of these are fun i would say for uh for youngest from uh, uh from elementary school age but i will tell you right now that i have played these games with elementary school age kids with middle school kids and i play them with my husband so uh i think that this package is perfect for any young people that you know you're going to get uh children's books that i'm sure you can give uh to some of the younger folks but then also you're going to get boggle and quiddler and oh my goodness lorraine is throwing in for two hundred dollars lorraine i believe in you lorraine i believe in you lorraine for two hundred dollars but even though i believe in lorraine i know that there is someone out there who sees this and says hey four hundred dollars for for all these games for my kids and we have no idea when we're getting back to school i will pay 250 dollars for this do i hear 250 out there come on people this is a busy be creative kit and remember that all of the money here is going to rytopia labs uh oh going to rytopia lab all right well so then what i'm going to do is there's anyone out there for two for 250 otherwise it is going to go to lorraine going to lorraine yes go do i hear going once going twice going three times and sold to lorraine ratchford you did it lorraine you got the busy be creative kit for kids and you also donated to rytopia lab now for everyone else out there if you have some money in your pocket please donate to rytopia lab now to do so many programs click that button we want to raise a hundred thousand dollars for the whole year fifty thousand dollars by year's end please click this and donate we will take anything uh that is currency you know you can you can keep all your other personal effects. But for now, I'm going to hand it back to our founding executive director, Rebecca wallace Segal, and that king of king of queens. Uh, oh, no. Whoa. I, and to the other king, or the queen of kings, uh, Kevin R. Free. All right. Love you guys so much. I'm going to take a nap. Love you, Dan. Have a good nap, Dan. <laughs> that was uh, that was incredibly entertaining. It really <laughs> was. was. Game. That was a loving video game. It so, was. Uh, yeah. I feel like Dan should have his own Netflix show where he just auctions things off. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I think he would need a lot of rest. Yeah, We'd absolutely. have to take a lot of care for of him. <laughs> um, but I want to take a second to thank the Raytopia staff uh, who worked so hard on creating those, on finding those donations, and to all of the companies that made donations to us um, that were part of those auction packages. And people will have time to continue to bid on some of them, and also just to help us get through this time. We are hoping to raise $50,000 by year's end, um, and then hopefully another 50,000 by the school year's end in order to meet the needs of all of the schools that we are serving um, that are asking us to come back who do not have the budget to bring us back. Um, we have already committed where we are just donating our own time uh, to one school in particular. We're gonna be working with them for the fall in two classrooms, and we're asking that the rest of our community helps us expand that 
commitment and um, expand that philanthropic um, impulse and help us bring um, social emotionally driven creative writing workshops um, yeah. to kids who need it the most right now. And I want to say a huge thank you to Kevin, our beloved board member, beloved board member, who's our newest and wow, not a slacker, working so hard to help write to a PL lab. And of course, you've been part of our festivals for so many years. And it's just a dream that you're with us now doing the, doing the hard work of all the all different kinds of hard work. So well, I, I wouldn't dream of not being involved, uh, Rebecca. I just really believe in Ritopia Lab so much and wish that I had had a Ritopia Lab when I was in school many, many, many years ago. Um, also, I just want to say before we say goodbye that I think it's great that Ritopia Lab is working with two classes in this school just to to maintain the relationship with those students and the school in the absence of the money that all of you watching and your friends watching will be donating to Ritopia by the end of the year. $50,000, it's such a small amount of money. You, We can yeah. do this, we can do this. And I just want to say thank you very much for saying that. I mean, we are, we're committed, you know, and um, and I want to say that um, a huge thank you to Candace Braun and Kim Hartman, uh, two other board members who are here yeah. with us who helped us plan this event from the beginning to the end. And thank you, Tim Rogers, another board member who's here who's been supporting and um, all of whom have just contributed with donations. And thank you for everyone who has been sending in donations over the last 45 minutes. Please don't stop. We really want to get to every single classroom at PS89. There's also lots of other schools on our list. We're just focusing on that one school right this moment with you all here. Those of you who are calling in from around the country, let us know. Um, let, let us know what your thoughts are and interests are about the kids um, in your area. So we've not talked about today. And um, I think I've thanked a lot of people. I hope I thanked everybody. I, <laughs> I want to thank some people by name though. Elsa, Ethan, <laughs> Lorraine, oh. Max, Robbie, um, Adriel, and Dan. Did I say Dan, Katrosser? Yeah. And you. So well, thank you. Thank, so, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. And a huge so thank much. you to Kevin James and his crew, the writers, the his crew, crew of writers from the crew. Um, that was so cool to have them. And yes, and thank you for every single writer and family who made those testimonials who are part of our film and part of today. And so much love to everybody. Right. Good night. Good night.